Oh. Oh. Something's broke. There's only a front one. This is the current state of my JLB Racing Cheetah diff. It's been sitting like this for a month. I just had it wrapped up for a while while I was waiting for the parts to come in. So the part has now come in. That's these outdrives that I broke. You can see the broken one here. So I've got the replacements. So I got an order of parts. There's the part number there, EA1071, diff cup. And while I ordered, you know, I got a bunch of stuff actually. So I got another diff cup. Uh, more A-arm tops and bottoms, and then um, axles. So here's the cheetah. It currently has its rear end ripped off. Anyway, here's the diff. I'm going to start putting it back together. I know I got to put the O-ring down on the bottom. I should probably put a little bit of lubrication down in there, and then shove this up through. And then there's the little pin. The pin goes through this gear, and I believe this gear sits this way. Um, and then you put your cross braces in make sure that you put your shims back there's a shim for each side very nice that it came shimmed and then there's the top part to it so that's what I'm going to put that back together conundrum is what weight diff fluid am I going to use so I have a 7000 that I just got I was going to run that in a race car I have a 50,000 weight silicone diff fluid and then here's another diff fluid that came with a kit with the Schumacher K1 Aero included a 125,000 CTS diff oil. So thickest, medium, thin. For this is the rear diff on the Cheetah. I'm not sure what to do. I'm actually thinking of trying the thinnest. All right, this is how it's really supposed to be. And you're gonna need a really thin plier to get in here to build this. To get that pin in there, it's using all the room I can. I'm pushed right up against the very edge of the diff cup and I'm just sliding it in. All right, I finally got it. That's how it's supposed to look. Now, I had a problem when I was pushing the pin through, the washer would uh, pivot up and then I'd get one side caught under. Anyway, it took me about five minutes to get that in there like that. Now I can drop the gear in and then I can do the planetaries and then I can button it up. Oh, well you gotta put diff fluid in. I'm gonna drop this on and then it kind of it kind of finds it itself. Like it's keyed to the shaft so it can only fit in where it engages. I'm just holding onto the gear pivoting and it's holding together. Okay, now for these, they have a little groove in the bar. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you put them in the right way. So this one would sit down the bottom like that with the groove facing up and the other one will sit this way with the groove facing down and put your shims on each end. Whoops. Okay, that one's in. Now I just gotta rotate the bar so that the that's on top, like that. Okay, so you can sort of see how it works. Now I can put the other the top on, the other gear set. Now I was saying that it shimmed, but I don't know, it'd be awfully thin piece of metal to try and shim it better. But if you really wanted to, I'm sure you could try and get it even tighter. All right, excellent. That seems to have fallen right into place. Just how I want it. That's how, how sometimes it can go really nicely. And that's how your differential works. Then then the other side, that's how you get wheels that can turn at different speeds. Before I put this side on, I need to put some diff fluid in. So you don't want to run it dry, that'd be awful. It'll wear it really quick. So we need to add a bunch of diff fluid. That's funny, I got a bubble. I don't know what's up with that. This is the 70,000 weight, no, not 70,000, 7,000. This is 7,000 weight diff fluid. I'm just going to put in enough to cover up the gears. I'm going to rotate it around a bit and get it to settle down in. You see, as soon as I moved it, it all settled down so I could pour a bunch more in. Oh, 
Whoa, crap. <laughs> oh, squeezing too hard. Because <laughs> you got to squeeze that hard to get it to come out. I don't want to wait a half an hour trying to fill up a diff cup. All right, that's pretty good. I'd say that that is full. Almost too much. There we go. Just shove that down in to on top. Put this in until the key engages. There we go, engaged. I just got to put my screws in. Remember, it's a plastic diff cup, so just go easy. Make sure it's actually engaging threads. Okay, you can feel the diff working. All right, now I'm gonna finish putting all the screws in. I'm just gonna take it down until it gets kind of snug and just keep working my way around. So I'm going just enough where I can feel it tighten up. Okay, that's it. Diff is complete. Now I can rebuild the car. The rear transmission. So there's my spur gear, right? I think it's a slipper. Does this just pop out? Oh no, it's got a gear on this side. Whoops, can't see anything. Better get a light on. All right, now this is my differential, so this rides inside. Good. Case back together, and I should put some kind of grease on here. So I'm gonna assemble it, and I can always add grease up through the bottom before I bolt it onto the chassis. I just need to marry it back on the truck. So drive shaft is out. First of all, I've got to uh, get this engaged into the front. Right now I'm holding onto the drive shaft while I'm going to try and insert this. Yeah, so kind of hold it up high. Make sure it's engaged in both sides. And then you just press the bearing down in. And then the bearing just fits on over the shaft there. And I should be able to just drop it down in. Just kind of work my way down back in, engage it back down in. There we go, falls into place. All right, there, I just heard it click down into place. And that's all working. And that's actually driving the front wheels too. Okay, good. Now I just need to uh, put the screws in the bottom. It's, it's pretty cool. I like how easy it is to work on. Okay, I had to take the rear transmission off again because it's been a while since I had taken it apart, I didn't remember. But these clamps, the these aluminum parts here, they have to go on front and back. So you put the back one on, or back front, you put the front one on first, and then I made it back on the chassis. And then I can put the suspension pins and stuff through, and the whole, the whole rear end's over here. Like, it all came apart all still together. So we're going to put this back on, and then put the rear end on, and then try and fit it all back in. This is as far as we have it now. So the upper shock shock tower goes in through the upper transmission and those two screws that are that you see sticking out there, you have to leave them out because the top part, the top A-arms, the screw goes all the way through the metal, through the upper plastic transmission and then into the back of this metal and that's what's sandwiching the upper A-arm pins into the shock towers. And then also the bottom uh, I was able to set the pins in through the arms and hang them in the front aluminum piece I showed you before and then the back is what clamps that on. But you have to put that together with the bumper. You have to slip the bumper in and then the, and then the metal around it. And we're getting close to having it all back together again. Okay, like I was mentioning, you do have to slip the bumper in under the transmission while you clamp, while you place the metal in. So because you can't get the metal in can't get the bumper on after so you get that set in place it gives you enough slide out action where you can move it back a bit and then screw these two screws down and then put it back into place when you're putting the rear transmission on the back back on the cheetah so the two towards the inside of the chassis are short 
and the, and the three on the outside are long. Um, and then this one here is a different smaller size and that's the uh, the six screws on the bottom that you need. Now the nice thing about the Cheetah is that it's symmetrical so it's the exact same setup front as rear. All right, and the Cheetah is all back together again. I'm just to have the gear cover to put back on. And that was kind of the last thing until I realized that he made a major mistake. So I was compressing the shocks and I was like, hey, why is my rear, why is that one towing in when the shocks compress? And I looked at my upper arms and I was like, yeah, that looks right. Oh, whoops. This one is on backwards. It should be flipped 180 degrees. And in order to do that, I just need to get the pin out of here, but I have to get this off again, and to get that off again, I gotta take all this, this stuff off. It's one in the morning, I'm tired, I'm just gonna go to bed. So, uh, next time you see it, it should be on the road. I still gotta take the shocks apart and check for oil. I don't think there's any oil in them at all. <laughs> all right, so another couple hours worth of work and it'll be ready to drive better than ever, but that's it for now. So thanks for watching.